It's not often that races over the 150 metre distance are held in athletics. In 1997, the 100m world record holder Donovan Bailey faced off against the 200m world record holder Michael Johnson to settle the dispute over who deserved the title of the world's fastest man. Who's the fastest man in the world? This race was never going to prove who the fastest man in the world is. All it was going to do is to shut Michael Johnson up. Bailey won the race in a modest time of 14.99 after Johnson pulled up, but it still felt as though the race result didn't give a satisfying answer to the world's fastest man question because of the ease with which a 100m sprinter was able to take the lead over an athlete who specialises in the 200 and 400. This begs the question, at what distance beyond 100 meters are a 100 specialist and 200 specialist most likely to hit the same split time? Would it have taken a 170 meter race for Johnson to catch Bailey if they had raced again? We will never know at this point, but all questions about which distance is most deserving of the world's fastest man title were forgotten in 2008 when Usain Bolt became the first man to hold both world records simultaneously. In 2009, Bolt again broke the records in the 100 and 200 meters, but also set the world record for the 150 meters on a straight track, clocking a time of 14.35. When Usain Bolt was at his best, I don't believe there is another sprinter who could have beat him at any distance between 100 and 200 meters, but it is interesting to speculate what times could have been run if the straight 150 meter race was run as a competitive event rather than just as an early season exhibition. In 2011, Tyson Gay ran a 150 meter straight time of 14.51. The year beforehand in 2010, however, he ran a 200 meter straight time of 19.42 in which he split a faster 150 meter time of 14.41. This begs the question of whether he could have ran a faster 150 meter split in 2009 when he set his 100 meter PB. But given that his win adjusted season's best comes to the same mark in 2009 and 2010, I think his 2010 run was close to his limit. He also appeared to run all out from the gun since he split a 100 meter time of 9.88 and had slowed down significantly at the end of the race, passing through the 150 to 200 mark in 5.01 seconds. If he had run a race to just 150 meters while he was in his best form, he may have been able to run a few hundreds faster, but I think he would have struggled to beat Bolt's mark of 14.35. Tyson Gay still remains as the American record holder for the 100 meters, but last season America found a new record holder for the 200 meters in Noah Lyles. I asked our audience who they thought would win in a fantasy matchup over 150 meters between the two American record holders, and Tyson received 57% of the votes, while Lyles received 43% of the votes. Many commenters felt that Tyson's top end speed would be too much for Lyles, since Lyles is known for his smooth acceleration and exceptional speed maintenance, which is the reason why he shines in the final 50 meters of a 200. Lyles has run a 150 meter race in 2019, where he clocked the time of 14.69 which makes him the fourth fastest man to run the event, but it is still quite a way off from the world record. Given that Lyle's season best in the 200 meters was 19.50 in 2019, which he has now lowered to 19.31, it is fair to assume that he would have been able to take a chunk off his 150 meter time if he ran the event again. Lyle's is known to be a strong anchor leg runner in relays, since it gives him a running start over a distance greater than 100 meters, which gives him more time to accelerate smoothly. Even though Lyle's 100 meter times have remained stagnant for the last few years, I believe the improvements he's made as an athlete last season may be enough for him to drop a 14.4 if he was to run the event again in good conditions. The third fastest man in the history of the 150 meters is the American Walter Dix with a time of 14.65 and I've been meaning to feature Dix in a video for some time to highlight what an underrated sprinter he was. Walter Dix is the sixth fastest man in the history of the 200 meters and is ranked in the top 40 in the history of the 100 meters. He had one of the greatest college careers ever, winning the NCAA 100 meter title in 2005 and 2007, and he also won the 200 meter title in 06 and 07, and still holds the NCAA 200 meter record of 19.69. He won bronze in the 100 and 200 at the 2008 Olympics, and won silver in both 100 and 200 in the 2011 World Championships. Given he was such a dual threat, it's no surprise to see him ranked as the third fastest all time for the 150 meter performance, but it's worth noting that the man who beat him comfortably in his 200 meter personal best race only gets the fifth place rank for his 150 meter PB. Johan Blake ran a straight 150 meter time of 14.71 in 2014, but this is surprisingly fast given that his best times that season were 10.02 and 20.48. This could be seen as evidence that a stronger 100m time is a greater predictor of your 150 prowess than your 200m time, 
and I believe that Johan Blake in 2012 would have had a good chance at breaking the 150 meter world record had he attempted it that year. When we compare the splits of Blake's 150 versus Bolt's 150, we see that Blake still holds his own through the first 100 meters, despite being in suboptimal shape. The gap widens slightly more by 150 meters, but I think a prime Blake would be able to split times of 9.85 and 14.32. Given that the entire track season is focused on building towards the major championships and all individual meets appear to have nothing at stake, I think that having a circuit of 150 meter races with the biggest stars involved could be a new avenue for growing the sport and it wouldn't interfere with the world athletics rankings. The event is typically run on a track of four lanes but having heats where two athletes go head to head could add some excitement, particularly if you have a team adidas versus team nike athlete in each heat for example, then the winners in four heats run in the final. The teams could also consist of 100m sprinters versus 200m sprinters to see who takes the crown as the best of the in-between distance. The goal of making track a better spectacle could be attained without the focus of every race being about qualifying times for the championships or setting a new world lead, but rather beating an opponent you've built up a rivalry with. What are your thoughts on the straight 150m event and would you like to see it being implemented more in the modern track schedule? Leave your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching.